because it is the 10 year anniversary today of the red Texas football banquet when Mac Brown was working behind the scenes with new athletic director, Steve Patterson to stay on as coach when the big money guys wanted him gone. And Mac successfully pushed his meeting with Bill Powers until an, what, 3.30 on, it was Friday the 13th, December 13th. And the banquet started at 6, and the meeting was at 3.30. And Mac had Joe Jamail, one of the greatest trial attorneys in the history of the state of Texas, as his agent, who's also a mega booster. And they go into the meeting with Bill Powers. Sally's in there, Mac, Joe Jamail, Steve Patterson. And Joe Jamail says, well, Bill, if you fire Mac and you hire Nick Saban, I'm going to file a tortious interference lawsuit against the Regents board. That's all I've got. Y'all have, y'all carry on. And Bill Powers is like, uh, Mac, I thought you were ready to take a break. No, I'm good. Steve, you good? Yeah, good. Mac, Mac, stay Bill Powers is like, uh, so they go out to the football banquet. Nick Saban has not signed his extension. He was in Austin. He was listening because there was some off the books money that was going to get Saban out of a bad business deal that he was in where he's paying a million dollars in debt service on a failed apartment complex in Houston. And the big money guys at Texas were going to write a check and make it go away. It was a lot of money too. 25 mil. Damn. And at that time, they weren't, you know, Saban wasn't like, hey, Bama, pay this bleep off for me. It, they just, Texas had it all. And then they didn't. They go into the banquet. Everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen, including Nick Saban. And Steve Patterson gets up there and is like, I'm looking forward to working with Mac for the next several years. And everyone's like, huh? And Mac's smiling. <laughs> and then Bill Powers gets up there, doesn't say a word. So everyone's like, what the hell's going on? Mac's still a coach? And then right in the middle of the banquet, Nick Saban leaks it to Kirk Herbstreet that he signed his extension at Alabama. And everyone just went nuts. And I had reported on Tuesday of that week that Mac would be stepping down as head coach by the end of the week. And everyone came at me on Twitter and was like, well, we're waiting. Like Jay Moore, who has 330,000 followers on Twitter, came at me and was like, well, Chip, we're waiting. And so all his followers came, you know, piling in. Like, I was like, all I ever said was that Mac would be stepping down by the end of the week. I never said Nick was coming. And sure enough, the next day, this, that was the craziest thing. So there are, there are 17 kids in on their official visit for that weekend, for that banquet weekend. And the next morning, Steve Patterson tells them, Mac Brown's going to be your coach. So they're like, oh, okay, all right. So they go off, and they're doing their tours and everything. And then the big money guys are like, this was not the deal. And they told Powers, go or tell Patterson, he's got to go fire Mac Brown right now. And, and so Patterson went and found Mac, told him, hey, it's over. Mac... I'm told called Bill Powers like a hundred times and Powers wouldn't answer the phone. And then that night, those same 17 kids on their official visit were told 
yeah, Mac Brown's not going to be your coach. Like, it was so bootleg. I mean, it was so <laughs> janky. But it was crazy. And then, you know, when they announced on Sunday that Mac was stepping down, um, you know, Jay Moore apologized, had me on his show. And it was, but that night, oh, I was getting death threats on Twitter. Damn. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I think the only tweet I sent out that night was like, all I ever said was Mac Brown would be stepping down by the end of the week. I never said Nick Saban was coming because I never did. Right. There's no way. You don't say Nick Saban's going anywhere until you see him at the podium wearing that school's shirt. After what he said, I'm not going to Alabama. Like, Nick is slick. Yeah. So, Mac, was he just so petty that he stayed because he didn't want Saban to take the rings after him? Yeah, because that was the guy who caused him to completely melt down by – you know, he losing in 09, that national championship that Mac was absolutely convinced he was going to win. And then that was the first. And Saban, you know, was going to come in and immediately have a better legacy than Mac. Mac wanted to be Daryl Royal Light. <sighs> legacy prison, Zay. When these coaches get into legacy prison, it becomes about them and me, and my record, and do you know what I've done? And Mac did a lot. I've always said they should call the North End in DKR the Mac Brown North End Zone. He built that. He built that. So give it to him. Don't give him a statue. Just give him Mac Brown North End. He won you a national championship, but it was ugly after that. Like, it was, it was ugly. Yeah, because your pride has taken over the fact that it should be your love for the school first. Like, your pride can't get in the way. Your time was up here. I know it hurts. Every Nobody wants to get fired. No one wants to get let go. But if you care about that university like you're supposed to, you'll do the right thing and set your pride aside and allow somebody to come in that has skins on the wall that's been there and done that and you know could do a good job and take over that's fine you want that like that's why i talk a lot of shit about red r back with boston celtics but he's a legend because he loved the boston celtics he was the coach that he was the owner hired the right people you see pat riley over there with miami he won a championship there but he's in the front office he has eric spolster in there now like he wants eric spolster to do better than him like it's just that's that's weak mac that's weak and that's why a lot of people don't have a lot of respect for mac during the end you know, like the glory days were the glory days, but well, yeah, and I, I, felt, ended. I felt for Mac because he had a vision for how it was going to end. And he was so convinced that he was going to win that 09 national championship. I've told this story before that press conference lets out at the Rose Bowl and Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports was standing right next to me. As Mac was coming off the dais and. Dennis, who was the president of the Football Writers Association at the time, said, well, Mac, we'll never know. And Mac looked at him and said, it wouldn't have been close. Like, I've never seen Mac like that. And he it it just got to him. He couldn't believe. He couldn't believe he was still had a chance to win a Big 12 title going to that last game against Baylor and was tied 3-3, and then he loses. It, it, it was a mess. It was a mess. Yeah. But 10 years ago, today, the Red Football Banquet, it was an unforgettable evening. As CB said, Chip got destroyed on Twitter. <laughs> Oh, it was 
It was, yeah, it was awful. 